Give us with all such love and wonder that with the shepherds and the pilgrims on go, that we may come to adore the holy child, the promised king, and with our guest worship him, who lives and reigns with you and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God and our Father. Amen. Please be seated. There's been much happening, I'm sure, over the, the past few days, but it has been a Christmas like no other. I'm sure there's been lots of people that you would normally see around this time of year that you couldn't. And I could go on with the list of things, but I won't depress us all by all the things that we can do. But it's great that we're able to be here this morning and to worship God. As I said earlier, you've probably had your body made in food, but there's surprisingly always room for dessert. And if it's anything like our house, there's a contest between which granny makes the better Christmas pudding. And I can't say this morning which granny makes the better Christmas pudding or I might get any more of it. I'm sure Christmas morning was an early start for some of you, especially if there's grandchildren and children. Or, or if it's like me, Judith was up to see what I got her. And the entire frappe paper that goes everywhere. These here were a common sight, and I'm trying to show my age already and become a grumpy old man, but this is a Christmas card to the Bears, okay? So this is one that was given postage, but well, it was actually hung up through the door, which would post the postman would do well to, to, to deliver that card, didn't it? To the Bears. And you can see it's a very nice card, but it has a message inside it. To Rodney and Judith and Maxie, which is our daughter. From, from Alison and Andrew, wishing you um, both um, a happy Christmas and a new year. So I'm sure you've all received lots of Christmas cards, and with the delays in the Royal Mail, you might continue to receive Christmas cards into January. I know there's a few partials that will be surprised about in the next few weeks whenever Amazon drops them off. But the Christmas card is becoming less and less of a way of sharing Christmas joy. Not as often you receive a text message or a WhatsApp wishing you a happy Christmas. Yeah, everyone, okay? I'm sure most of you have received some Christmas cards as well, but I remember growing up in the, in the, in the rectory and one of these beautiful strings all across the wall and there would be cards and cards and cards um, and there was lots of other hideous decorations that were going on throughout. Since that time, you remember the gardens that were shut on from the middle of the room, and all the tinsel and lots of coloured lights, which don't really seem to be in fashion anymore. But the Christmas card from Andrew and Allison is a message to me and Judith. And if you had a message to share, a really, really important message, we wouldn't just send it on a Christmas card. We might ask to tell the Queen and let her share it, or we might speak to Ari to get it announced, or we might speak to people who are really, really powerful or who are really, really rich. So you might speak to a couple of the prisoners this morning as well. But the Christmas message wasn't told to the King at the time, wasn't told to those who were powerful, but was told to the shepherds, one of the lowest jobs a job that is quite smelly. I know there's a few sheep running around the fields around here, and sheep are quite stubborn animals to work with, and if one gets out, they're all going to get out. So the shepherds were the ones that were told the message. God didn't tell King Herod that there was going to be the Messiah born in a manger and to go and see and to tell others about that. It was told to the shepherds as we read in the book this morning. It says in verse 10, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find him wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. The news, the baby, Jesus, 
the Savior had been born. And the angels came and announced that to these shepherds. And I know when I, you can just picture yourself as a shepherd, and it would be a wee bit more dramatic than the words that I just read in Luke, that this sight of the angels singing to them, and then all of a sudden they turn to each other and say, let's go and see what the fuss is about. I think it would be a wee bit more excitement and maybe a wee bit more like a bit more of amazement to what was going on. That they went and seen the baby, the baby lion, and I know every school had online nativities this year and stuff, but the story of the nativity, the shepherds go to see baby Jesus lying in the manger. But they just don't leave, leave it at that. They, they just don't say the good news and not pass it on. It says that they go about and tell everybody the good news. They go and tell people of those things that they have seen and experienced. And I'm sure over the next few days you'll be telling people what you got for Christmas, whether it was some clothes or a new coat or some fancy gadget for your house or for your, or you maybe got a new Hoover this year, those shark seems to be quite a popular thing. I think I would have got a smack if I had bought a Hoover for, for Judith for Christmas. Um, but you're going to be telling people what you got for Christmas and you're not going to just keep that a secret. You're not just going to hide that away and to not tell anybody. And that is the same for us when we know the good news of Jesus. We can't just keep that a secret. We have to go and tell others about him and what he has done for us. And you, like with every story, this is just the beginning. Christmas is just the beginning. We wouldn't be sitting here this morning if there was just ever a Christmas. Because for us to believe in our faith and what we say in our affirmation about Jesus, that Easter happened, that he came to earth so that he would die and become that sacrifice for our sins. Our Saviour was born, but our Saviour also died and rose again to become our Saviour. That Christ is the hope and the joy of the world. And what Easter represents, I know I'm worse than the supermarkets who tomorrow will be selling Easter eggs and me talking about Easter, but we worship a risen King this morning. We worship Jesus who has ascended into heaven. And yes, we are thankful that he came to earth and lived on earth for 33 years. And it says in Hebrews that he was tempted in every way that we are yet without sin. That he is the perfect sacrifice for us all. So just as you see the Christmas cards and maybe as a few arrive over the next few days from the posties that have been kind of catch up with the different delays. And as you take them down and you think about the message that your friends will write to you, some will write more than others. Or as you think about the WhatsApps that you've received at this time, think about the message of Christmas. That it is a message to all people. It's not just to the rich and to the powerful. It doesn't matter who we think we are. The shepherds didn't think themselves as very important. And that message is for us all, and it is for us all to share as well. So this Christmas, as we start to think about the new year and some hopes for the new year, let us remember that Jesus is the reason for this time of year. And as we go into this week, let us not be afraid to tell others of that good news, as we're going to be showing off our, our new hoovers or our new coats or whatever we have received over the past few days. And let us pray. God, we do thank you for your son. We thank you for the wonderful news. We thank you how you chose ordinary people to deliver your message and how you will use us to tell those we come into contact with of your good news. And we thank you that it just didn't end in a manger with the birth of a king, but through the cross and through the resurrection that we can have hope in eternal life and we can have joy in knowing that you died and rose again for us all. Amen.